I want us to read the Word of God in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. And I will say terrible times, terrible times will come. Terrible times will come. Yes. So the Bible continues to say, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to their parents, and thankful and holy, and loving and forgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, healthy, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. Have nothing to do with such. In other words, that is the last days. I believe we are in the last days. And uh, I don't know whether you are witnesses of the things we've just read about the last days. Lovers of people loving themselves, busters, abusive, you know, blasphemous, disobedient to their parents, and thankful, and only. Have you, have, you, are you, have you seen these things in our days? So those are w w things that were talked about that will happen. And we are living in those days. <clears throat> so when I'm reading all those attitudes and behaviors, I'm summarizing all those words with one word, ungodly. That in the last days, people will be ungodly. The danger of the last days will be propelled by ungodliness. And so this morning, I want to talk about a godly man. A godly man. When I say a godly man, if you are a lady, you need to be a godly woman. So I want to talk about godliness upon us. Because in the last days, as I've said, according to Paul, people will be ungodly. In verse number five, you will notice what Paul is telling his son, Timothy. And he's telling him people will have a form of godliness but denying its power. And he told him from such people, turn away. Have nothing to do with them. There will be ungodly people who will have a form of godliness. But the power of godliness will not be in them. Because what they are having is a dress of godliness, a cover of godliness. In other words, Paul is saying in the last days, we will have baptized people, but ungodly. We will have church goers, but ungodly. We'll have offering giving men and women, but ungodly. Married in church, but, un but ungodly. Standing with the projects financially and physically, but ungodly. They will be perilous days. People will only have a form, a mold. They will have, they will have known the how to be godly, but they will not be godly. How to appear godly, but they will not be godly. 
They, they, they will be able to say praise God by ungodly people. They will be able to dress nicely, but very ungodly. <laughs> ungodly people. Listen to me. Godliness is not outside inside. But rather it is inside out. You don't do things to appear godly or rather to become godly. You don't dress in a certain way to be godly. You don't talk in a certain way to be godly. Godliness is something that happens inside you then when it comes out it affects the outside somebody godly will be having some effect from within and that effect will go out to affect people outside today i read the most tough scriptures scripture that i've ever read in my life when god is speaking to me I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know what word of God is to you, but sometimes the word of God in my life is a sword. It's fire. It's a hammer. Psalm 12. Psalm 12. And verse 1. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalms. And it begins with the word help. Saidia. Saidia. <laughs> Saidia Buana. Help, Lord. For the godly man ceases. For the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. <laughs> godly people are nowhere. Bible says, are no more in NIV. The godly are no more. Kile tumebaki nacho ni watu wenye umbo la uungu ila hali awana uungu alisi. I don't know what you would feel, my friend, if you went to the shop to buy a cooking oil, a certain brand, and you buy, put it in your bag, you buy some um, mafuta kujipaka, some lotion, a certain brand, put it in the bag, and you go to the kitchen, and when you are frying whatever you are frying, you dip your spoon, and you find it is is not what you bought. What would you feel? What would you feel? You try to pour the lotion on your hands and before you apply, you feel the smell. It's something different. What would you feel? It has a form of that brand you use. It has printing. The shape of the bottle is very nice. The shape of the container is so appealing. But inside, it's not what you expected. That is what God is telling us today. The godly are no more and the faithful have vanished from among them. They have vanished. They are not there. So, what is happening in the world that you're living today? No godliness. Listen to the expectations of God. God expects you to be a mother who is godly. God expects you to be a businessman, but who is godly. God expects you to be a career woman, who is godly? God expects you 
to be a, 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 a ministry man, a singer, who has godliness within himself. Hallelujah. I know God has protected you and by his grace you have attended very many funerals. Assume one day you are the one in that casket. That is not a curse. All of us, if Jesus tarries, we will die. And we will be buried by living people. If your wife will be crying, why will she be crying? You know, sometimes people think people are crying because they are left. Others cry for joy. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I'm a pastor. I talk to people. My work is to talk to people. I've talked to widows and widows. If, if, if you are the one who has left, what, what will we have lost? Will we lose a businessman? Will we lose a driver who used to drive us? Will you lose a protector? Will we lose a rent payer? Someone who was paying rent. Or we will lose a godly father. A godly mother. Who will we lose? It's very easy to be carried by your career, by your, your, your talents, by your gifts, by your, by your business, by what you do, until you forget your basic mandate on earth. The Bible says we are the light of the world. And the light cannot be lit and put beneath the, the table. It has to be above for people to see. The Bible says we are a city on a hill. Oh, praise God. We are salt of the world. We are here to represent the kingdom amidst, amongst many things that we are doing. Godliness should be our distinction. And that is why the other day I was preaching and I was saying the gospel does not change. It doesn't change. Whether there is pandemic, it doesn't change. Whether you are in the village, it doesn't change. Whether you have money or not, it doesn't change. Whether people celebrate you or not, it doesn't change. Godliness has to be there always. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to be godly. Amen. Hallelujah. I love what God was challenging me with. When you read the word of God, you will notice that God changed in the New Testament, not really changing, but the Ten Commandments were compressed into one law. And the one law has A and the B. He said, the whole thing is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, you know, love the Lord your God with all your everything. Number two, that is the B of the same. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. In other words, it is loving God. It is having a relationship, good relationship with God and a good relationship with men. And that's why Jesus asks, who do men say I am? Holiness. God knows your holiness. And your godliness is all about how you affect other people. Because when God has come in your life, you are the fear of God, you have forgiven your sins, then how do you affect other people? How do you touch other people? That is godliness. And if Son of God can ask in Matthew 16, 13, who do men say that I am? Why is he concerned? 
He is the holy son of God. But he is, is he upright before men? Because the, the, the godliness must manifest by the effect. The holiness must be seen by how he is affecting other people. He's asking them, who do men say I am? And when they told, he told them, ah, people are saying this, uh, he asked them, and you, what do you say? Who do you say I am? Because you are so men. I know of people who give a lot of testimonies, which is very good. But before you tell us who you are, what does your wife say you are? What do they say you are? Before you tell us who you are. My name is so and so and you give us so many titles and, and there's so many places you've been and so many things you have achieved. Before you tell us that. Uyo mze wako. Uyo mme wako. Uyo mke wako. That, that son of yours. There is a certain WhatsApp message that was moving all over about a man who died and he was a great man of God and the people came to mourn and to do the burial and all that. And, and the, one of the sons, when people were talking the great achievements of the man, asked one of the family members, who are they talking about? <laughs> who are they talking is it the man we know? <laughs> the son. And the story goes, they wrote on the grave, we will never serve your God. We will never serve your God. What are you saying, pastor? Charity begins at home. Yes. Do not be a hero to the world and a failure at your own house, in your own house. And when you read the word of God, you notice Paul was very candid to Timothy, his young boy, his young pastor. He told him, when you are choosing leaders, he told him that somebody should be able to manage his house. What did he ask after that? If he cannot manage his house, how? In other words, why? <laughs> why are you giving him position? If his children are not subject to him, why? Why, why? why do you think the things of God he qualifies? Yet Paul makes it so simple that People in your house should have a testimony. Should know you as a godly man. Your neighbors should know you as a godly man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be like, a, like, a, like us preachers and the politicians. We talk a lot. And we don't care what our wives are saying. I thank God I preach with my wife. We talk a lot in the TV, and we don't care what the people in our constituencies are saying. We don't care. We, we don't mind. Who do people say you are? Because the psalmist said, and godly people are no more. I believe we can turn that around. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, we can turn that around in the name of the Lord and make things happen and change the story and the people say there is a godly man in a certain place. Hallelujah. Look at the book of Job. 
The whole book talks of many things. But see the introduction of that book. Let's look at the introduction of that book. It says this. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. And, no, uh, and, and the one who feared God and shunned evil. Until the devil and the God had a discussion concerning him. Because his character was outstanding. When you read the word of God in the time of Job, there was also a lot of evil. So what would God say about you in the days that you are living today? There are several behaviors of a godly man or a godly woman of God. Some behaviors. Number one, he takes his counsel from the word of God. He takes his counsel from the word of God. You see, friends, every time the word of God will challenge you and you will not do things your way, but you will do in accordance to the word of God. Praise the Lord. He takes his counsel from the word of God. It doesn't matter what doctors say, what uh, surveyors say, what uh, politicians say, what his profession say, he takes his counsel from the word of God. And so for that reason, he meditates on that word. A godly man is a word person. I was reading the book of Psalms, Psalm 119. It is a very common scripture for Sunday school teachers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 105. It is says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, I walk according to thy word. How will I manage to walk according to your word, which is a light unto my feet? Which is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Verse number 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. A godly man or a godly woman will ask what does the word of God say? You will not ask what do people say? What does the word of God say? Godly man will meditate on the word of God day and night. In the book of Joshua, that is what the Bible says. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. A godly man is a, is, a, is a word man. You confess the word. You speak the word. You meditate the word. You don't do what you feel. You are speaking the word. When you are sick, you confess the word. When you are broke, you confess the word. When there are so many hindrances on your way, you speak the word of God. So you have to study the word continually, individually, you have to study the word. A godly man will be seen in a Bible study, will be seen in a devotion, will be seen, you know, on his phone reading the Bible. 
some Christians don't have even one Bible in their phones. And every day at midnight, they are on their phones. A godly person has the word. People can hear you listening to a preaching. People can hear you listening to something godly. Because you are a godly man. You don't do what people do. You are not carried by the fashions of the world. You are carried by the word. Hallelujah. So he is committed to the word of God continually. I have preached this word for decades and it is new every day to me. I read scripture and I feel like I've never seen it. I read one scripture and I feel I am naked before God. It's so new, so powerful, it's like a hammer. But what will happen if I'm only reading newspapers and listening to, TV, uh, to radios and watching TV programs and going to YouTube and listening to politics every day? That is what is going to occupy me. But if I'm going to give myself continually to the Word, it's going to change me. The Word of God is a life. If you are sick, start listening to messages of hope and healing deliverance you will find yourself healed the word of god is so powerful if you can't speak it allow somebody else to speak it to you the bible says the godly people are no more people can read bible in matatu on on you know in a public vehicle are no more people can carry a black bible are no more and no more. It is the word of God in Psalm 12. The godly are no more. The faithful <laughs> have vanished. Nobody wants to read Bible. A godly man, number two, is humble to worship. Not to be entertained. No, 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 no. Humble to worship. He can close his eyes and lift up his hands. Even if you pass through a certain shop and there is a worship music, godly music, it touches you, it moves you. You feel it in your spirit. Hallelujah. If you get into your house, the greatest thing you can do is to bow before him and give him glory. Singing and talking to God is not work. It is some, it's, it's pleasure. It's something that brings fulfillment in the inside of you. Humble to worship. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Humble to worship. When I was young, I think when I was a boy, because I'm still young, when I was a boy, I used to see people coming from, from a, church service if they were in a church service and they are going home uh, you used to hear them going singing what about when they are traveling they are maybe going for a mission they used to sing in the buses but today we are all on phones you can travel the whole week and you will never get into a vehicle that has a preacher. And if he is there, he is mocked. Things of God have no more value, no test. You are saved and you are in that public vehicle, in that meeting. You cannot say amen when the preacher is Lest people think you are one of that man. <laughs> a godly man is humble to worship. He wants to identify himself. With godly things, with godly people. Hallelujah. A godly man testifies of the Lord. You can greet him at the other side of the road. Praise the Lord, brother. Amen. I heard of a man who said, when you meet me in my marketplace, don't tell me, praise God, you may spoil my business because most of my clients are not born again and they don't have to be born again. I agree. 
but you are the light of the world. I challenge every woman. The saloon you have gone and they have made your hair nicely. You have taken several women there. The shop you went and they did for you good dresses. You have taken several people there. The place you went and they treated you well. Maybe a hospital and they gave you nice attendance. They treated you well. You have taken other people there. How comes these things of God you don't want people to test? Godly people tell people where they fellowship. Godly people talk about their salvation. Hallelujah. I don't have a problem to, to stand with a brother in the marketplace and pray with him. But I see people are knees. When I tell them, can we pray? They are like, huh? Here. Godly people are no more. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but when I got saved, we used to have badges written, I am saved. Ambassador of Christ. Hallelujah. And Bible bags printed, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. There was joy to testify of the faith that we are in. I see people having no problem in wearing Jubilee t-shirts. I say, I say people, even Christians, Empresa t-shirts. I say they're not, not having any problem. And equity umbrella. Equity umbrella. Oh, wow. And beat them. <laughs> Do we have a problem with that? But, but, but wearing a t-shirt, written Jesus is Lord. Mm, no. I wish... God can help us to change that narrative. Amen. Amen. And every month we can have a certain t-shirt we are wearing. Amen. Every month, all of us, yes. we do that for 12 months. We change the thinking of men. A godly man has no problem with, you know, showing people who they are, telling people who they are. They are not ashamed of the gospel. Woo! That is what Paul said in the book of Romans. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not. And Jesus said, if you are afraid of, ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Why are you ashamed of the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me read for you Romans 1.16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes. For the Jews first and also the Greeks. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. You know, you, you people, you can hide easily. But some of us, we cannot hide. There's so many places I go and people tell me, according to the way you are talking, you must be a pastor, eh? I asked them, how am I talking? That voice. <laughs> but you people, you know, you have nice voice. Number four is a godly man teaches the way. Notice the word there. The article there. It teaches the way. Now that way, I don't know whether you get what I mean. It's in the book of Acts. <laughs> In other words, the way of righteousness. Eh? It teaches the way to his children and the others under him or with him. In the Old Testament, they were told, teach your children. Teach your children. And your children's children. Teach them. So a godly man, before you go and say, I'm Pastor Sam, be a pastor in your house. Yeah. Be a leader of a service in your house. Guide your children. 
If you are godly, don't jump, jump in the church. Don't jump, jump in meetings or in your place of work. Yes, they call you pastor in your place of work, and you are not even a pastor. But does your children call you a pastor? Have they adopted your lifestyle? Wakiwa wakubwa ni sawa wa njia yao. Lakini maandiko inasema ukiwaweka katika njia za Bwana hata kwepa katika njia za Mungu akishakuwa wakubwa. They may pretend, they may they may look like they are bored by that life, but that seed will affect their future. They will be godly definitely. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Teach your children Teach your children the ways of God. <laughs> Don't just talk about God and you're not teaching. And when I say teaching, I'm talking of teaching, not preaching. Don't, 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 don't just lift up your hand in the house and say, the Bible says, uh, no, 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 no. Teach your children. Let your children ask you, where is heaven? Which side? Teach them. Teach them. When they ask you, how does the devil look like? Answer them. Answer them. Yes. You know, children will ask you honest questions. Where is heaven? Which side is heaven? How does God look like? Answer them. Spend time with them. A godly man, a godly woman develops his or her children or the people around him in the ways of God. No assumption. For those who are married, you need to know you need to develop your spouse in the things of God. We are there to help each other. There are so many areas my wife has developed me into, has helped me. And there are many areas I have helped her. Maybe one of you is not good in prayer. Don't, don't start talking bad about No. And you are talking about your husband. No. No, 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 no. You don't talk like that. You develop them. You even stand in the gap on their behalf. Teaches his children the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say the last one. A godly man serves God with a passion. A godly man serves God with a passion. He's passionate about God. You don't encourage him to be godly. He's just excited about God. I love serving the Lord. I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. I don't say I won't do other things. But everything I will do, it will be wrapped up with the service of God. It will be there to glorify the Lord. I want to read you a psalm, Psalm 69, verse 7. This is a very interesting scripture. Listen to the psalmist, what he says. I endure scorn for your sake, and a shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family and a stranger to my own mother's Children, I'm what? A foreigner and a stranger to my own mother's children. I don't look like I belong to that family. Why? For the zeal for your house does what? Consumes me. And the insults of those who insult you fall on me. Hey, the zeal of your house 
When you say today is the day of the Lord, I mean that thing eats me up. If we can be consumed by the zeal of the house, you don't need any program on Sunday. You just need to come and be here. When you are here, you see things. God opens your eyes to see things. You see visions. You see, you see, you hear, your ears hear. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that this thing will consume us and we be godly. Let us not be known just as husbands or wives or students, businessmen. Let us be known to be godly men. And let's change the narrative that there are no more godly people. Hallelujah. Let's change that narrative that there are no more godly people. There are godly people. Hallelujah.